Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. Get ready for your daily dose of Tuttle. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Greetings and welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Hopefully everybody survived this big, scary, tropical storm that we ended up having. I mean, it was a hurricane for a little bit. But it just fizzled out. And, you know, this is what ends up happening. You know, the people that are not native Floridians, the ones that have moved down here, they don't take the storms serious enough. I I take pretty much all the storms serious. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a tropical storm. It's unorganized. Not, Not a lot of people know this, but those unorganized storms, can spawn a lot of tornadoes and stuff, but it it almost seems like the meteorologist got this one completely wrong. Like, seriously, it it did a little wiggle, kind of did a little juke. You thought it was going to go into Tampa, and then it started moving faster. I mean, we did a lot of rain here. I know Tampa ended up getting a lot of rain yesterday, uh, yesterday, you know, right there on Bayshore. If you live in the Tampa area, that that place always floods no matter what. I remember we, we just had a bad rainstorm when I was working on In Your Face with Drew Garabo. I ended up going down there to see all the flooding that was going on, and it is bad. A lot of people don't realize this. Tampa is kind of like New Orleans. It is a little low-lying area. And there is water everywhere you look. So this storm was a little bit of a dud. And the true Floridians, they they know when to take it seriously. Like I said on yesterday's show, if the Waffle House is closed, then you need to start worrying. You should always be prepared no matter what at the beginning of hurricane season and have your little kit set up, water, whatever it may be. Because what ends up happening is everybody goes crazy. Uh, Everybody, like, crowds the gas lines. And then it just raises the prices. We get a little bit of a shortage. And then everybody is screwed. But I hope everybody made it okay. I was a little worried that if the tropical storm did come right into the uh, Tampa Bay, especially during high tide, Not a lot of people realize how close Amelie Arena is. That is the place where the Tampa Bay Lightning play at. Game 5 is tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. Hopefully uh, Tampa Bay can win it on the home ice tonight. A lot of people are like, oh, well, they're up 3-0. It really doesn't happen that much. Do you realize that it had never happened in baseball before the Red Sox come or came back from 3 nothing against the Yankees when they ended up winning their first World Series? It's happened a couple of times, I think, in basketball. But I think hockey, I think it's happened like four or five times. And that's why I kind of like despise the people that were like, oh, maybe, maybe we should throw game four just so we can win the Stanley Cup on home ice? No, no. When you got your foot on somebody's throat, you go you go directly for the kill shot. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can get a hold of me. You can email me, Tuttle, at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. I did end up getting this email today, and I don't want any of you guys to think that I do not listen to the Bubba the Love Sponge show anymore. I I catch it. I mostly catch highlights on the YouTube channel. It's because I I I get up and I'm I I have my my routine. 
I start uh, doing show prep for the show. As soon as I get up, I end up working out. I do my first workout of the day. I end up making breakfast. I go out and start recording. And I don't get a chance to catch the show all the time. But I did get this email in from Samantha. It says, hey, Tuttle, I've been enjoying your podcast and we all miss you at the BRN. I know you said you don't think you're allowed on the terrestrial show anymore. But did you know Rhett ended up quitting? Now, I don't even know who Rhett is. I've heard his name quite a bit. I think he was doing a lot of video editing and stuff and maybe doing show prep and stuff like that. But Samantha says, I think you need to reach out to Blitz and see if you can start helping out behind the scenes for Bubba. I would absolutely love that. Who knows? After some time passing, you might be able to smooth things over over the Shannon Burke thing. At the very least, you could still do an uncensored show or even your podcast on Bubba Army Radio. On a side note, it's amazing how healthy you're looking from sober living and working out because you look jacked. Thank you. <laughs> and, and by the way, I, I mentioned this the other day. A lot of hosts do write their own emails and stuff to be able to get into a conversation. But I mean, I will even take a screenshot of this and post it on my social media uh, of the email. But you look jack in your newest uh, thumbnail standing by your PT Cruiser studio. Love the show once again, Samantha. Now, I would, I, I would absolutely be down for that 100%. You know, the, the reason and the main thing that how I was able to get my foot in the door at the Bubba Radio Network was back in 2010. I had just gotten fired from the Monsters in the morning at Real Radio 104.1 in Orlando, and I had not had to look for a new radio job in, like I said, in a decade. And I didn't want to take a step down and go to another radio show. I either wanted to make a lateral move or, or move up a little bit, and I heard that the Bubba the Love Sponge show had an opening for a web guy. Now, I'll admit, I did not know a goddamn thing about doing websites, but I saw it as a way to get my foot in the door. I ended, I ended up interviewing with uh, Russ, the sales ferret, and Hamill, Rip Hamill. Hamill is a, you know, he committed suicide uh, way before I tried it. And it was really, really sad. I, I liked Hamill a lot. Uh, I wish that I knew that he was battling the demons that he was because he was just a very, very kind soul. But I did lie to him. Technically, I did not lie to them because I, I had done website. I had done my, MySpace. Do you remember with MySpace when, like, you would go and you would learn HTML coding just so you could, like, put some badass, like, wallpaper, have some music playing, go over the top? Because a lot of people had some badass MySpace pages back in the day. Do any of you guys even still, like, when was the last time that you've logged in to MySpace? Man, I can't even remember. I don't even remember what email I even used. I can't even begin to tell you what my password would have been. I know that it was myspace.com slash Tuttle. But back to what I was saying, it was like technically I had done websites. I did MySpace. I had done Facebook. I did a, I did a little bit of Twitter. Technically, those are websites. So I was able to get hired. I was able to do that. And I was just biding my time. I was taking a lot of notes behind the scenes. I was trying to be a little strange and weird because radio hosts, if I'm just being honest, they like weird. They love unusual. And most of the people there didn't know the type of experience that I had. So I was able to weasel myself into the studio one day and I absolutely killed it. But from what I'm what I'm reading, because once I got that email, I went and watched 
the uh, YouTube video, the the uncensored show that uh, Bubba did today, and they were talking about Rhett quitting. And I think he was doing a lot of the YouTube videos for the show. Now, this is something that I actually do know how to do. Like, I am good at editing. I am good at, see, the great, the one thing you got to have when it comes to editing videos is what to keep and what to get rid of. I mean, they give a motherfucking Oscar away from, uh, for editing in, in cinema. So it is a talent to be able to know what is good and what, is, what isn't. And I know what is good and what is not good. Because I have worked with some of the biggest radio personalities, biggest radio shows in Central Florida. So what I'm trying to say is, guys, if you need help, I am willing to do stuff behind the scenes. I think when I get done with this show, I'm going to call Blitz. Not call Blitz. I'll text Blitz. I don't like to call him and bother him. But I'm just going to reach out, make the offer. Hey, I'm, I, and, and I know a lot of you guys probably think that I am a sucker, but I want to throw it out there. Hey, what can I do to help you guys out behind the scenes? Because I don't need to be on the air. I know that I fucked up. I apologize. Like, seriously, I will get on my bending knees and I will apologize to anybody that I offended. Matter of fact, I will kiss Shannon Burke's bare ass live on the air, live on YouTube, whatever they want, just to, you know, get in the good graces of whoever is mad at me at Florida Man Radio. I mean, think about this. JVZ owns Florida Man Radio. And Bubba, yes, Bubba is one of the greatest radio personalities, one of the greatest hosts in the United States of America, and he has admitted his mistakes. He knows that he is fucked up. Not fucked up, like, personally, but he has fucked up, made some bad decisions, and he's gotten second chances. So why should I not get a second chance? Well, technically, this would be, like, my mm, seventh or eighth chance, but I've learned my lesson. I mean, I have, uh, I've humbled myself. I am not a, uh, an addict anymore. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing drugs. I do smoke a little marijuana, but I think a lot of people on radio do. And I think I deserve a second chance. And like I said, I don't care what I got to do. I just want to be able to grow this podcast that I'm doing, the content that I'm putting out there, and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do. So I would like to hear from you. And if you guys are listening to this, please, I don't want you to bug Bubba. I don't want you to like just say, oh, you need to hire Tuttleback or I'm going to stop listening. No. But if you are listening to this, let him know. Let him know the offer that I'm putting out on the table. Because I think I really can help. I think I can do the editing that needs to be done. I can do it. I'm not going to bitch or complain. That's the one thing that you can say about me. Even though I was a fuck up back in the day and I had a bad attitude and I was an alcoholic, I never really ever missed a day of work. I've only missed a day of work one day in my whole entire radio career. And that was when the last time that I worked uh, on the Monsters in the Morning at Real Radio back in 2014. I had a radio promotion at a nightclub the night before. And I ended up drinking too much and I overslept because I forgot to set my alarm. And it's never happened again. I never once ever, ever missed a day on the Bubble Love Sponge show on the morning show. Now, when I was on Bubba Army Radio and I had a shitty-ass car, I did have some car problems, but I did the best that I could. I would like to hear from you. If you think that I'm just pestering, and I'll back off. If you think that this is going to bug Bubba, 
I like to hear from you. Once again, like like when I read this email, I love to have interaction with my supporters of my show. There's a couple of ways because I am working on this studio here in the shed. I know it's going to be a ghetto, ghetto ass studio, but it's going to be good. It is going to be one of the best MacGyvered white trash studios that you're ever going to see. I'm going to start doing my live stream. I'm going to start doing a two hour live stream every single day. And I'm going to take that audio from that and put it up for the podcast. But you can email me, Tuttle at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. Once again, that is 407-270-3044. So yesterday I had the day from hell. If you uh, listened to yesterday's show, you heard me talk about how I got pulled over because of an expired tag. Uh, I've kind of taken over my dad's old truck. I've kind of inherited it. My mom is now uh, driving the PT Cruiser. And I was out driving around. I got pulled over by uh, a Volusia County Sheriff's Officer because my tag was expired. Well, technically not my tag. But my dad died three days after his birthday. You got to realize he was in the hospital for almost a month. And it just, it, it slipped our mind. Did not even think about it. So I got pulled over. I told you on yesterday's show that there was a little bit more detail that I was going to talk about. So I ended up getting pulled over. And come to find out, my license was suspended. Now, I have, I, through my entire life, I have never had a moving violation. I have never gotten pulled over for speeding. I have never been in an accident in the 41 years of my life. But for some reason, I got pulled over. They said my license had been suspended since 2013. Did not even know that. Now, I ended up going to get the tag renewed the very next day that it was open because Monday was a holiday day. Uh, Tuesday, my mom drove me up to the tax collector to be able to get the registration fixed. We ended up getting the registration fixed, got the new uh, little sticker you got to put on the tag, got all that taken care of. Well, while I was there, I asked the, the lady, because they're not going to let you get your uh, tag uh, redone if you have an expired license or a revoked license, whatever it may be. She ended up looking up my name, and there was not a single ticket that I had. Did not owe the government, the state of Florida, Volusia County, any money at all. I don't have any kids that I have to pay child support on. So I know that that's not the reason my license was suspended. Ended up finding out the reason why my license was suspended was because I ended up getting an ID card. And when I ended up getting my license back the last time, because the last time my license was suspended, the one time that I ended up going to jail, I didn't have enough time to be able to get my license renewed because that is when me and my wife at the time ended up going to England and I needed an ID to be able to get on the plane. I needed it for my uh, passport, all that good stuff. Ended up getting that. I ended up getting my license renewed, but they never, ever asked me back for the ID card. Well, come to find out, uh, it is against the law to hold to IDs, and they ended up suspended my license, and I didn't even know about it. So I've been driving around for quite a while without a license. I mean, that that should pretty much show you what type of driver I am. I ended up uh, <laughs> not getting caught or anything like that. And like I said, the Volusia County Sheriff's Officer that pulled me over, was very, very cool. He knew that my dad had passed away, 
because he was able to look it up. He could see that my father was deceased. He was really, really cool. He could have taken me to jail if he wanted to, but he didn't. Ended up getting the truck back. So back to my original story. I went to the DMV today in Volusia County. And this is a thing that really, really pissed me off. I don't want people to think that I'm turning into a conservative, but I really do think that we've we've either caused a problem by it, it, it's easier for people. And, and also COVID has something to do with this. It is easier for people to stay at home, get paid by the government, and not have to go to work. Because when I went there today, and if you go to my social media, you can see the picture of the line. The line just to get into the DMV office was longer than a football field long. Now, they have 15 windows, and they only had three employees helping people out to be able to get their licenses back. Now, not only was the line to get in there uh, over a football field long, there was had to be, I'm just estimating, over 50 people waiting inside. I waited all day, got there at 10, waited, and I didn't even get inside the office to be able to get my license, just to be able to sit down. And they came out and said that they are no longer seeing any more customers. I don't even know if you if you could consider customers because we are taxpaying citizens and the DMV, we pay their salary. What the fuck is going on? I really think that the local news media needs to know something about this. And I'm tempted to let them know about this. Because I, I watch live PD all the time. I watch uh, uh, cops. And you see people all the time. They either have a suspended license or they don't have an ID. They don't want to get it because, oh well, for one reason, is because they most likely have warrants and stuff. And it just, it drives me crazy because there were so many people there, minorities, Caucasian, you had African Americans, you had Spanish, you had Asian descent people there. Everybody was trying to get their license fixed. And you're telling me that you can only get three people to be able to do that? And this is also the other thing. A lot of people are like, oh, well, why didn't you make an appointment? They do not allow you to be able to make appointments anymore in certain counties in the state of Florida. So it's not like I could have done that because I tried to be able to get an appointment and they wouldn't let me. And I think that is goddamn ridiculous. Also, the other thing that happened, we all were standing. And the thing is, is that if you had to go use the restroom, a lot of people were not letting you save your place in line. People were getting in fight, arguments, all types of stuff. If you had to go take a piss, they they were like, oh, no, no, you left. You can't get back in line. And to make things worse, there was this mother that ended up bringing her three kids with her. One was the age of eight. I'm just guessing. The other one, probably five or six. And then the other one was an infant wearing a diaper. And she was letting her kid just crawl all over the place on a dirty ass floor waiting to get into the DMV. These kids were yelling and screaming the whole time. We weren't even outside. See, because the way that this was set up, it's kind of like in like a real ghetto type mall. So it's not like it was outside. So the noise, no, it was in a, uh, uh, the floor was like marble. All the walls were hard. So what I'm trying to say is these screaming ass kids were just, the, the mother was not keeping them under control at all. Now, it is one thing to tell a Caucasian mother, hey, you need to control your kids a little bit. 
because I'm tired of hearing them screaming their lungs out all goddamn day long. But this was an African-American mother, a big mama, big, fat, overweight, obese, African-American woman. Like, I, I wanted to say something, but the last thing you want to do is tell a African-American mother to take, you know, take control of your kids, get them under control, because you are asking for trouble. Because it's going to either cause a big fight, because African-American mothers, they do not like to be told what to do with their kids. And this is not a racist or racism type thing at all. But I really don't think I could have squared up with this woman if I would have said something because I think she could have actually taken me. So what I'm trying to say is if any of you other people have had a problem with this, I would like to hear from you. I know that I've been giving out the voicemail and my email quite a bit. But I I love to be able to get interaction from you guys. And if you guys have had to deal with something like this, I would like to hear from you. You can email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. Going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to be talking about the horrible apology that Felicia Rashad, the uh, woman, the actor that played the wife of Cliff Huxable, Bill Cosby. A lot of people are upset over the tweet that she said. And I wanted to play this audio story because she actually works at Howard University. And a lot of the female uh, students are really, really upset with the tweet that she sent out. Be back in a few minutes. You are listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Great news, folks. You now have the chance to see the face in front of that sexy voice. Right you are, sir. The Tuttle Daily Podcast streams Monday to Friday on YouTube. Anything can happen at the Hobo Fish Camp. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, sir. That's enough. Okay. So go to youtube.com slash Tuttle. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you're notified anytime Tuttle goes live. Good job, sir. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Compliments? Or do you just want to tell Tuttle to fuck off? In any event, contact Tuttle. Tuttle at gmail.com. It's uh, Tuttle with two Ds, dumbass. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. If you guys would like to help out you, if you would like to donate to the cause, because I write every single person back that donates money to be able to, you know, help me out to buy new equipment. I've talked about how I'm trying to build this new studio here at the Hobo Fish Camp so I could start live streaming every single day. If you would like to uh, donate to the cause, you can easily do that by going to my PayPal account, paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. I write back every single person that donates anything to me, even if it's a dollar. I reach out and tell them how appreciative I am of their generosity and supporting the Tuttle Daily Podcast. And if you don't want to help out financially, I know a lot of people are going through a hard time right now. I talked about that previously. A lot of people are not working right now. And if you can't do that, Just tell your friends, family, loved ones, your neighbors, your coworkers, whoever it may be, just tell them to check out the show. I just, I I ask, ask everybody, just give it a chance. That's all I'm asking. If you think I suck, then I suck. Don't listen to the show. But I just want to reach out to as many people as I can. So before I went to break, I want, I, I told you guys about this story. I talked about this a little bit as soon as Cliff Huxable, Bill Cosby got out of jail on a technicality. I mean, he was not found innocent. He really, really wasn't. He got off on a technicality and they ended up letting him out. Now, if that would have been any of us, 
any of us regular Joe Schmoes, the the blue collar guys, the ones that are working their asses off every single day doing menial jobs, we our asses would still be in jail. Let's be honest. The only reason Bill Cosby got out of prison for what he did was because he was America's dad. This week, Howard University is open for summer classes, but some students are still reeling from last week's comments made by Felicia Rashad, their College of Fine Arts dean, who tweeted in support of Bill Cosby. As a highly educated woman, especially a black woman, you need to know better than that. You, you just cannot send out that type of tweet. Even if that's the way that you feel, you just need to keep it to yourself. Or Felicia Rashad could be one of the dumbest people that I have ever seen when it comes to being a celebrity. How, how in the world do you think that that was a good tweet before you hit the send button? There's no way. Like, seriously. That's why these celebrities should not be in control of their own social media accounts. That's why they need their publicists before. I mean, they could write them out, but before they hit the send button, they need to have somebody else read over it and say, oh, you know what? This might not be a good tweet to send out defending somebody. That was a sexual predator. Kind of like a slap in the face, to be completely honest with you. Darlene Singitani, a new Howard graduate, says Rashad's comments harm the effort of trying to lift the shame and guilt often associated with reporting sexual assaults. That's also another thing that people are not thinking about. The ripple effect something like this is going to cause. That how many women are not going to report being sexually assaulted, being drugged, date raped, rape in general. Because now all these people are out there and this rapist, Bill Cosby, the guy that everybody thought was America's dad, the one that, you know, kind of like looks down on other comedians that work blue the ones that curse in their stand-up comedy routines. And this guy is out there raping people. You know, I, I know that uh, Eddie Murphy, the rumors were that he got caught with transvestites. You look at Eddie Murphy, or not Eddie Murphy, but Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor set himself on fire, freebasing crack cocaine. So, yeah, even though they did that, that was kind of something that they did on their own. In the case of Eddie Murphy, that was something between two consenting adults, if that is a true story. You know, as long as prostitution, if the woman is wanting to do that, I don't think prostitution should be illegal. I know that a lot of people say, well, it... it it breeds a uh, uh, sex sex trade, people getting kidnapped and being sold for sexual gratification and stuff. But if it is two consenting adults, even if it is a male and a transvestite, who gives a damn? But what Bill or what Bill Cosby did, even compared to Richard Pryor, yeah, he did that on his own. He set himself on fire freebasing rock cocaine and he didn't hurt anybody else but Bill Cosby he was a sexual predator he was drugging women and taking advantage of them it kind of feels as if she doesn't feel for those victims and doesn't feel for those other victims who have not been able to come forward especially at college campuses especially at higher campuses because I know that there are plenty of incidences that have occurred that women do not feel comfortable com coming forward about Howard Law student Makaya Lyons agrees. This day and age, everybody likes to make something about race. It's racist. You're a racist. It's racism. No, all the people, all the women that they are talking to that are students at Howard University, they are all African-American women. So I don't even want to hear that bullshit excuse that 
this all comes down to racism? No, it, it really, really does not. Now, I know a lot of people are, uh, you know, have the uh, the opinion that these women, they should have known better. They knew what they were getting into. No, 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 no. That That is bullshit. I've also heard a lot of people that want to say, oh, the women the, that were with Harvey Weinstein, they all knew what they were uh, what they were getting into. They could have said no, but no, 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 not at all, because they go in there thinking, oh, this guy, that's the big producer of all these great movies. There's never in a million years that he is going to try to take advantage of me, ask for sexual favors just so I can get a movie role. No, not at all. I think that is a horrible opinion. And it's just a bad take all around. There are real implications to communicating to young women and vulnerable people that they don't matter in the shadow of a powerful man's legacy. And that's what that communicated, whether she intended to or not. Rashad's tweet came last week after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned Cosby's sexual assault conviction. The ruling did not say Cosby wasn't guilty of the accusations. It said his rights of due process were violated. Even so, Rashad, a long supporter of her former co-star, tweeted, finally, a terrible wrong is being righted. A miscarriage of justice is corrected. So what you're trying to say is that the white, and I don't even know if it is, but I'm almost sure that it probably was a white district attorney cut a deal with Cosby back in the day to be able to get his testimony that it gives him the right to be able to get off for the crimes that he committed. I also do believe that, you know, we need to have something called double jeopardy here in the United States, where if you're tried for a capital murder case and you're up against the death penalty and you get off and you're found innocent or not innocent, just not guilty. See, that's where a lot of people get things twisted. They think not guilty means that the person is innocent. No, no, that does not even come close to what that means. We all know that Casey Anthony killed Kaylee Anthony back in the day, but she, uh, uh, the prosecution, they tried to go too far. They should have never, ever went for the death penalty unless they knew absolutely sure, without a doubt, that they were going to win the case. But I think that you de do need to have that. Because I've always, I've always, always had the opinion that I would rather let a guilty person go if they can't prove it in the court of law then execute an innocent United States citizen. The backlash was immediate. Calls came in for her resignation and for Howard to fire her. Rashad, quick to apologize, saying in part, my remarks were in no way directed towards survivors of sexual assault. I vehemently oppose sexual violence, find no excuse for such behavior. Now, I can't speak for Felicia Rashad, but why would you even tweet that out? I mean, it, it, it sounds like an insincere uh, uh, apology. It really, really does, because that is what you said. That is what you said. I mean, it would have been a better excuse if you would have said, oh, that was one of my interns that, that tweeted that out. I didn't know anything about that. Because a lot of people think a lot of these celebrities are actually sending out the tweets that they send out. No, that, that is not the case at all. But I mean, you said it. Own up to what you said because now it just seems like you're backpedaling and it only makes you look even worse. The university distancing itself from Rashad, saying Rashad's initial tweet lacks sensitivity towards survivors of sexual assault. Personal positions of university leadership do not reflect Howard University policies. There were some who publicly supported Rashad's initial comments about Cosby, including singer Stephanie Mills and former TV reality judge Joe Brown. Are we really getting the opinion? I don't even, I, I mean, Judge Joe Brown could really be a real judge, 
But he is a joke. You are a TV judge. I mean, you are on the same level as Judge Wapner from the People's Court. So, yeah, why are we even going to Judge Joe Brown to get his opinion on this whole entire thing? By the way, Judge Joe Brown, African-American man, everything goes back to race. Our country is so divided. Look, why can we not just look at what is right and what is wrong? I'm not saying that Judge Joe Brown uh, was just only uh, backing up what Felicia Rashad said or or what uh, happened with Bill Cosby just because he's African-American. But that is how a lot of people are going to take it. And I'm just being honest by saying that. And Cosby himself, who criticized Howard University, saying you must support one's freedom of speech, which is taught or supposed to be taught every day at that renowned law school. So this is where I have a real problem with everything, you know, because Bill Cosby has always just looked down. He has ostracized all the other comedians that are blue. You know, uh, Eddie Murphy had a great stand-up bit that he did. I don't know if it was uh, uh, during his Raw uh, comedy special that he did, but he was talking about the phone call that he got from uh, Bill Cosby one time, uh, talking about, why do you have to work so blue? I, I can't do uh, uh, impersonations. I, I never claimed to be able to, to do impersonations. But Bill Cosby was talking down, why do you have to be so filthy? I almost sound like Jerry Seinfeld there. But what I'm trying to say is, you can't look down on other comedians for cursing during their stand-up routines and then turn around and use the First Amendment as a defense for Felicia Rashad. It just makes you look like the biggest hypocritical rapist that you are. The question for some who work within the sexual assault community now is, was Rashad's apology enough? We really believe that colleges and universities need to listen to their student community and particularly their student survivor community. And if the student survivors at Howard feel that she should be removed, fundamentally the college needs to take that seriously. The students we spoke to could not say for sure if they thought Rashad should keep her position. Serena Strotter is a poli-sci major and president of Revolt, an on-campus group helping to create a safe space for women. I still believe that Felicia Rashad has a lot to offer, especially to the College of Fine Arts. Um, but I understand if other students feel that more action needs to be taken, and I would support that as well. You want to know what I'm really, really tired of? These celebrities that get these honorary doctorates. Because you, you know that uh, Bill Cosby actually has a honorary doctorate, I think from Temple or one of those colleges out there. You know, let's not pit these people up on a pedestal. I'm not saying that Felicia Rashad has done anything against the law, but she also needs to be held accountable for her actions, what she said. Do you know how many people, regular people, that get lambasted, that get kicked off of social media, that get banned? I don't want you to think I'm talking about Trump. And I know that all the social media people, uh, that is their business. They make their own rules. They are a private business and stuff. But I'm not defending Trump at all. But why, where, and, and I'm not even trying to put what Felicia Rashad said on the same level as Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump now came out today and he has a class action lawsuit against all the other social media people. Now, I know his comments kind of incited a riot at our nation's capital, but why isn't Felicia Rashad? Why did she not get banned? Why did she not get shadow banned? Because I've been shadow banned for the littlest of things that I've commented on. I'm just saying, we're picking and choosing on who we want to uh, go after. And censorship is becoming a problem. 
I, I'm not saying that Felicia Rashad did not have the right to be able to say what she said, but you also, just like our economy, the invisible hand, let the community, let things play out. That's why on the radio, I think we should be able to say and do whatever we want to and let the marketplace control it. We should be able to curse, say whatever we want to. Absolute freedom of speech. And what I mean by that is that if you are doing something that people don't like, they're not going to be listening to you. And if you're not, if they're not listening to you, you're not getting ratings. And if you're not getting ratings, you're not getting advertising. And then your ass is going to be fired and you are out of a job. Didn't mean to go on a rant. Going to take a quick break and get into some fun stuff for the final segment. And you are listening to the Total Daily Podcast. Wish you could have just flown and had your vehicle arrive a day or two later so you can enjoy more time doing what's important to you? Well, you can. Just give Starfire Transport a call. Let the professionals do the driving while you're flying. Starfire Transport specializes in RV and auto transport. They'll also haul watercraft from boats to PWCs, cargo trailers, and more. Service available throughout the continental United States. So don't wait. Call Brian today at 574-349-4193 or 989-751-6106 for your next move. 10% off for veterans past or present. Also, make sure to tell them Tuttle sent you for an additional discount. That's Starfire Transport. Want to support the show? Go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast, last segment of the show. If you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button, because if you hit that bell button, it's going to alert you to any time I go live or I upload any new content. Uh, I got a, 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 two last pieces of audio that are kind of related. I don't want anybody to think I am being a woman hater or I'm being a manly man, kind of like Al Bundy back in the day with no ma'am. No, that's that's not what it is. This, this first piece of audio that I'm going to play for you is very, very innocent, but it also just shows how men, because every, everybody wants to talk about how men are the dogs how men are the ones that cheat, how women are the innocent ones. I'm not trying to paint a broad picture or stereotype because I I think it is 50-50. Like, I, I think women can be just as ruthless and heartless as men can be when it comes to, like, dating or romantic relationships. And this poor little kid... This audio was caught on his uh, parents' ring doorbell. You know how much great audio I've gotten off of these ring doorbells? I got to tell you, the audio quality is amazing. But this little kid has a crush, probably, I don't know, five, six, maybe seven years old. He's got a friend that, you know, like at that age, you don't even know what love is. But this little boy proposes. He uh, he made this little heart-shaped like present to give to this girl. And he gets down on one knee and proposes to his best friend, who happens to be a little girl. Funny thing is, the little girl does not even hesitate. Like, her mom... Must have been teaching her at a young age. And just, she came out with no immediately. And then the little boy replies by, you are mean. I know the audio is still not the best, but I just wanted to kind of like subtitle it with my commentary. She says, I don't want to. What? Because the little boy, as soon as she says no, throws the little heart-shaped box, I'm not trying to quote Nirvana, onto the ground and and has his feelings hurt. Ah, man, it's funny. 
The older you get, things really, really don't change. I I played this. I'm not trying to say that this little girl was like a B I T C H, because I don't want to call a minor that word. But it it just shows you at a young age how we do stuff. I remember one of my first like crushes. I think it might have been like fifth or even sixth grade my mom took me to like this little jewelry store and i ended up buying this like cheap it it was nothing special it was like a necklace that had a heart shaped like locket on it and i don't even to be honest i don't even remember what the name of the girl was you gotta remember i've had a lot of head injuries through my radio career from all the dumb shit that i've done But I remember uh, finding it, like, laying on the playground. Like, she, uh, and it was near the garbage can. Like, seriously, I think she was trying to throw it in the garbage can and did not even make it into the garbage can. That is how much she really gave a fuck about me at the time. She didn't even, like, oh, I missed the garbage can. Uh, I might want to pick this up. Nope, just left it right there. It was one of the first, like, crushing moments in my young childhood life mess with the chick that like you not the one you like the guy that you hear speaking there is a real life pimp yes he is a pimp he uh protects a lot of hookers street walkers and I, when i heard this piece of audio it kind of made a little sense to me because a lot of guys do this a lot of guys do this because Guys love just, like, image. They like physical things. Guys are just more physical, and that is what causes us a lot of problems. We always go for, like, the good-looking chick. We always go for the uh, beautiful chick. And I don't want you to think that I do not, like, find, like, it is very, very important in a relationship to be sexually and physically attracted to somebody, but they also got to be a good person. They got to be a person that they care about you, and this is what this certain pimp is talking about. The one you like, you're going to accept all kind of stuff out of it. And y'all know it's true. You're going to accept all kind of stuff, but you never accept off another chick. You know, that statement right there really hit me hard. It really hit close to home. And... Any of you guys that listen to the show, because I know that this is a male-oriented demographic that listens to the Total Daily Podcast, but we have all been there. Like, the one chick that we really, really like, the one that for some reason there's just something about it, the sex might just be amazing. Like, she might blow your mind. I've talked about this. The One of the first girls that just rocked my world sexually, I thought that was love. I thought it was love. I thought I was in love with her. I was like, this is the chick that I'm going to marry. And she is the one that did me the dirtiest out of all of them. Eh, right, maybe, might be up there with uh, my ex-wife. I hope she's not listening. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that guys think a great sex life means love and that's not the case and it might be another chick right next door that like you and and gonna do everything and keep you right but uh you'd rather mess with this pretty girl over here man i mean come on this is a pimp and say what you want you might want to look down on pimps you think that they're taking advantage of these hoes and stuff that's not the case This guy is speaking the truth. He really, really is. Because the girl that is still attractive, but the one that shows you attention, I mean, it's the case of when you should be going for the one that wants you, the one that's going to treat you right, the one that is still uh, attractive to you that you have sexual chemistry with. But guys are so goddamn dumb that we just want to have the thing that is denying us. It's like we are a glutton for punishment. That's giving you all kind of problems, you dig? That's how the world goes. 
not just with the pimp and the whole game. A lot of people have a tendency to write people they're supposed to treat right, that's loyal and dedicated. They overlook it and they treat the other people right. That mean them no good, no intentions. And that's what I'm talking about. I've talked about this on many, many occasions on my show. I think that I am too nice of a guy. I treat the ladies that I might be interested in, the women that I'm kind of courting, that I want to date and maybe uh, take it further than just being friends. And I really do think that sometimes women look at that as a turnoff. They really, really do. They they look at it as, ooh, the, this guy is weak. I can walk all over him. I can take advantage of him. I can set up dates with him. And I can no call, no show. And just completely disrespect him. And go out and do other things. It, 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 that's, that's just the way that I have experienced love in my life like i go overboard i try to put these women that i'm interested on a pedestal and i don't want to be an asshole i really really don't because i would i was raised to be i i even though i get a little controversial on this show i was raised to be a gentleman like i open the door for any woman i say yes ma'am no ma'am uh, like not, not if it's somebody that I'm dating, but I, I'm just a gentleman. I, I there, I'm not going to lie. There have been women, uh, in my early to mid to late twenties that I did make a move on the first date. And guess what? Those uh, women that didn't turn into anything at all. It didn't turn into a long-term relationship. It was very short. I ended up getting my heart broken because I thought it was through love when it wasn't. Because that's what guys do. When the sex is really, really good, you think you're in love with them when you're really, really not. And I don't want to be an asshole. A lot of my friends, a lot of women, they, oh, you know what? You're, you go overboard with the niceness. And some of the women think it think that it's fake. They think that I'm not really that way, and I'm just being that way because I'm wanting to fuck them. And that's not the case. I, I really, really do try to be a gentleman and stuff, and it's really, really not been working out for me. I am 41, about to be 42, coming up in November. So, yeah, kind of depressing. But I still wanted to play it for you, and I wanted to share it for you. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Hope you guys stay safe. Make sure you tell everybody about this show. And I thank you for listening to today's Tuttle Daily Podcast. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by Starfire Transport, stitchyouup.com, and pocketbearclub.com. Special thanks to show producer Vulture and co-host Sirach. Show voiceover service is brought to you by jcvoiceover.com and The Little Cheese Show. Download and subscribe to The Little Cheese Show everywhere podcasts are found. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. You have something you want to say? Tuttle at gmail.com or leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all Tuttle social media, go to Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two D's dot net. Thanks again for all your support and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I get ignorant in normal situations. What? What you mean? What the fuck you mean? What, what are you talking about? Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, shit.